Verification is a process of evaluating products of development phase to find out whether they meet the specific requirement. Okay. Validation is the process of evaluating software at the end of development to determine whether software meets the customer's expectation or not. Okay. So the dif major difference between validation and verification is validation is done during the time of development. Okay, after the development is over. At that point of time, you will do the validation, but verification, you will do it in the initial phase itself, in the development phase itself. Okay, this is to me to know what is the requirement of the client. Okay, the objective of verification is to make sure that the product being developed is as per the requirement or not. So, what is the purpose of verification? Verification, you basically try to find out whether if the client has told me to write A, B, C, D then have I written A, B, C, D or not? That is what you do in verification. But in validation, what you will do is, after writing A, B, C, D, you will check whether it is written correctly or not. Okay. Then following activities are involved in verification. You will have meetings, inspections and reviews, all that is not needed. Then you have, uh, in validation, you'll have different types of testing, black, white, gray, user acceptance, all that. Verification is carried out by QA team. Validation is carried out by testing team. Execution of code is not come, uh, is not comes of code, does not come under verification. Execution of code comes under validation. Okay. So this is another verification difference. Let's not talk about that enough of validation and verification. Let's discuss about what are the uses of testing? Okay, how it is possible? How will you analyze the defect and all that? Okay, so there are certain principles of software testing. See, all this is not interview question, but all this, if you know, you will be able to understand what we are test, why we are testing, what is the purpose of testing? So, exhaustive testing is not possible. Yes, exhaustive testing is not possible. Instead, we need to optimal amount of testing based on risk assessment of the application. And the million dollar question is, how do we determine the risk? To answer this, let's do an exercise. In your opinion, which operation is most likely to cause operation system failure? I am sure most of you would have suggested opening 10 different applications all at the same time. So if you were testing the operating system, you would realize the defects are likely to be found of multitasking defects. Okay. So what is exhaustive testing? Exhaustive testing. Okay. Why is it not possible? So exhaustive testing means we will do all the testing. We will sit full time. We will just, with all our efforts, we will do all the testing but we will not do risk analysis okay what is risk analysis when you do testing when you are working with the testing team most of the time they will discuss about what are the risk you will face okay this is live environment in the live environment every company every project will talk about risk what are the risk if you do this what is the risk let's anal analyze the risk okay. so if you just say i am going to go ahead and do the testing Okay, and there is no risk, it's not possible. Okay, there are different risks. The risk is you will have a defect. You your system will fail. Okay, due to overload, your system will fail. Or you will take lots of time to execute. Okay. Maybe your your estimate is one month, okay, but to, to complete those, it will take two months. One second. Okay, so all those risks you will have to analyze. That is first thing. Okay. Defect clustering. Defect clustering, which states that a small amount of module contains most of the defects detected. This is the application of principle. Approximately 80% of the problem are found in 20% of the modules. Okay. By principle, you are 
identify such risk module but this approach has its own problem if the same test is repeated over and over eventually the same test will no longer find new bugs okay so what is defect clustering first one what we saw is risk analysis what we saw is risk analysis okay second thing what we will see is defects coming again and again when i say defect clustering defect clustering means defect forming again and again and again okay grouping together so what happens how would you avoid this in order to avoid this you will have to repeat the test again and again okay say for example you have test 1 2 3 four okay there are four five test cases which you have written the first test case you executed it is working fine the second test case when you executed it, it is throwing an error it is not working as per the requirement third fourth fifth is working fine okay so what happens here is you found an error in step 2 okay so you raise a defect you have it resolved but if you go ahead and retest it again after the issue is resolved you will see that by doing testing two times the bug itself is gone okay so that cluster is not formed cluster means group okay if you don't address the issue if you don't address the defect then the defect will be as it is right so in order to avoid defect clustering you'll have to do the test again and again and again one two or three times same test case okay coming to next one which is pesticide paradox let's learn what is this repetitive use of the same pesticide mixed to eradicate insect during farming will over time lead to a insect developing resistance to the pesticide thereby ineffective of pesticide this is an example the same applies to software testing if same set of repetitive tests are conducted the method will be useless for discovering new defects so what they are actually trying to say is see in order to execute test case 1 2 3 4 5 you have written certain process okay after writing the process you are testing that again and again even after you get the error it is resolved you are testing it again the same way So if you keep doing that you will not find different types of error you will not find anything new so what you have to do is the best approach is you will have to find a way to do testing in a different process okay the tester's job is to find defect how will you find defect by not following the same process again and again you have to follow different process to see if you are getting any error or not okay so this is called pesticide paradox next one is testing shows a presence of defect testing principle says that testing talks about the presence of defect as don't talk about the absence of defect that is software testing reduces the probability of undiscovered defects remaining in the software but even if no defect were found it is not a proof of correctness so first one what we saw is risk analysis second what we saw is we will have to repeat the same test cases to check if it is working fine or not third one we saw is we have to do a different approach we have to find different approach to do a test case so that we can find more defects as a tester fourth one is fourth one is software testing reduces the probability of undiscovered defects remaining in software but even then defects are uh, it is not a proof of correctness so the rule of software testing is even if you don't find an error that doesn't mean that whatever software you are testing is correct 100% that is not the meaning okay there can be a defect there can be a defect which comes tomorrow or in a different process Okay, so that is the rule of defect. Absence of error. 
it is possible that software which is 99% bug free is still unstable. This can be the case if the system is tested thoroughly for the wrong requirement. Software testing is not mere finding defects, but also to check whether software addresses the business needs. Absence of error is a fallacy, that is, finding and fixing defects does not help if the system builds in unstable and does not fulfill the user's needed requirement. So, what is absence of error? Absence of error means you are doing a testing, okay, and you have found that everything is working fine. All of it is working fine. Whatever the requirement is, document is there. Everything is fine. But the software itself is not meeting its client's requirement. For example, Workday. Okay, Hyundai has bought Workday, and they have implemented Workday, and they have started the testing, and they have completed the testing. All the sign-off is over. Okay, but later Hyundai realizes. Whatever they have implemented, they don't even need it. That's not even, you know, they can manage without that, whatever they implemented. So that is called as absence of error fallacy. Early testing. Early testing. Testing should start at as early as possible in software development cycle so that any defect required. Okay. So what is early testing? Early testing means you remember we were discussing about validation and verification we have to do the testing during validation and also during verification yeah so same thing we are talking about so the sooner you do the test after the coding is over the sooner you do the test the sooner you will find lots of error and all your defects can be handled and resolved because because we are still doing the coding okay we are still in the development cycle so if we are in the development cycle, we will be able to find the errors quickly. We'll be able to resolve the error. And that's what it means by early testing. The so next is testing in context dependent. Testing is context dependent, which basically means that the way you test an e-commerce site will be different from the way you test commercial off-the-shelf application. Okay, so what is there are different possibilities of testing, okay? It is not necessary if I am doing testing in Workday, it is same as testing Amazon or Flipkart, okay? Those are also e-commerce websites. Workday is an application, okay? So the way you test, the way you approach, that is totally different based on the application. So that's what you mean by finding out the testing and context. Of what actually you are doing. See, there is a beautiful example here. For instance, testing any POS system at a retail store will be different from ATM machine. So, when you do a testing for that card swipe machine in the supermarket, that machine and the ATM machine, the testing, these are two different things. Okay. So, your approach, your thought should be different. It cannot be the same. Okay. So, that is one of the principle of testing. You should have different uh, different thoughts about testing based on your application, based on your requirement of the client. You should not approach the same way. Whatever you have done in your previous company, you should not approach the same way in your current company. Okay, because every application is different. Every software is different. Okay, it's the purpose of it is different. So as you join the new company, you will have to change your thought process based on the company. So now uh, we are we are going to learn about software development life cycle. Okay, we will not do it today. Yeah, we will do it tomorrow.